Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today I want to talk to you certainly about the Word, um, but uh, uh, looking particularly at that passage of uh, where, where Jacob uh, struck upon this amazing place where he found this stairway to heaven. Um, so just recapping on that, remember Jacob, was, he was travelling from one place to another and he was in no place in particular, um, he thought, uh, and he laid down to sleep that night and as he was sleeping he had a dream and in that dream there was a stairway that went from earth to heaven and the angels were ascending and descending as in going up and down on this stairway where he was. And he woke up in the morning and he thought, I've come across the gateway to heaven. God is in this place and I didn't know it and this is the gateway to heaven. Now, a question arises as to whether that was in fact the gateway to heaven, but that was Jacob's interpretation of the activities there. It was a very special place. Um, it seemed to be a special place because in that place he had an experience that he didn't have in other places. And so he marked that place with a rock and he poured oil over it so that became a, a designated place or a, 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 a sacred site, if you like. Um, and it remained that. He called it Bethel, uh, which is Hebrew, two words, Beth El, Beth or Baith is the word for house, El, short for Elohim, house of God. So that's what that means. Bethel, house of God. As in God is in this place. This is where God lives. We know it's not where God lives, but God made his presence known. God became manifest in that place that made that a special place. So that got me to thinking, I thought there are places around the world, aren't there, where people say God is in this place. Um, do you know of any such places? If you Google, uh, you know, places where God is manifest or something like that, you, you come up with various things. Um, probably a little bit surprisingly, I find that there, are, there seem to be more places where people have a vision of Mary than of Jesus. Um, Mary seems to get the popularity. People will say there's a, they see a, a place of Mary. You know, the, there's the... Uh, oh, I thought I'd remember that place, but now I can't. It sounds like Mudgy Gory or something. But anyway, there are a number of those around the place. Actually, I can tell you how many because uh, you have to go to Catholic websites to find them because oh, no. they've, the Catholic Church has approved like about 20, 18 or 20, but they've had something like four or 500 applications, you know, people saying, hey, this is a brilliant site, and they've had a bit of a look and say, well, yeah, maybe for you, but not for everybody. But there are a number of places that they say, yeah, we're going to back this one, Right? So they've approved sites which are of particular significance. So that got me to thinking. I thought, yeah, there's other things too, aren't there? Around the world, there are places of particular spirituality. And so I googled that thing. You have to adjust your words and everything to finally get them. But there's a, the phrase that you look for is thin places. Have you heard the term? Thin places. It's, a, it's an ancient Celtic term where it's a place where the, the divide between heaven and earth is, has worn thin. I don't know if it's worn thin, but, but it's very thin. And so there's, in that place, you are more likely to have a spiritual experience. Um, I thought that was, that's really interesting. They're still today, and one such is the Isle of Iona. I don't know if you know about that. Um, there was a, a TV documentary about it a little while ago, 
and still today people go there for retreats and things and and many people have profound spiritual experiences just in that place because they've gone there and they've experienced that and if you have a look at the history of Iona it's probably the oldest continuing um, place of worship and biblical study and spiritual discipleship uh, on the on the earth like uh, it's been uninterrupted from about the fourth century uh, really early and there's well we don't know exactly when it started but we do know that I, I have read in a in in one historical account that Saint Augustine the second Saint Augustine in the 600s 6th century so the five something no 640 or something uh, he went there and found so so you had this um, Christian missionary going to England to take the gospel there and on the Isle of Iona he found a group of Christians and he said they'd been there for for ages and ages and ages um, and so he and they didn't really know how he got there legend has it that uh, well one legend anyway has it that the uh, the soldier at the foot of the cross the uh, Joseph of Arimathea no that's right Joseph of Arimathea went to England I don't know how he got there Qantas special or something I don't know but uh, uh, that's one such story but so so folklore has it that this Isle of Iona has been a place of worship since the year dot pretty much they don't know when it started so you have this constant uh, prayer and focus on on Christian spirituality for all of those years and so the local folklore says that that's that's developed a kind of a thin place between heaven and earth it's an interesting story isn't it and there's there's other places like that too where where people say that in a certain place there's a feeling of spirituality I had some people telling me once people came to visit us uh, in Rockhampton and they said that that there was a um, this pastor and his family lived in this house for five or ten years and uh, and their practice was that they would get up at three o'clock in the morning and pray that was their family worship time not not my idea of a good time but anyway that was their worship time there was that was their particular approach and so they would get up at three o'clock in the morning and they would pray for an hour and then they go back to bed they sold the house moved away went somewhere else they got a phone call about six months later from the new new occupants of the house and they said we, we're just wondering about this house because we've been woken up number of times at three o'clock in the morning and we can hear singing did you notice anything about this house interesting did they did they had they developed a thin place um, anyway oh there we go during the 20th century there have been 386 cases of Marian apparitions that's visions of Mary the church has made no decision so that would be the Catholic Church probably central office somewhere uh, made no decision about the supernatural character regarding 299 of the 386 cases so well, it's nearly a hundred cases that they've come to a conclusion about um, there's also been a number of high-profile visions of Jesus um, now visions of Jesus is interesting uh, I think it's interesting that they're not they're probably not recorded so much but anyway visions of Jesus I have heard reports uh, through um, 
uh, Voice of the Martyrs, uh, that organisation that, that deals with Christians in, in uh, difficult situations. There have been a number of, of reports of visions of Jesus on the battle lines, particularly uh, in uh, ISIS fighters like Islamic State um, soldiers. You know, the, a few years ago they were, they were fighting to create an Islamic State and so they were pretty much scorched earth in front of them. They would you know, pretty much kill anyone who disagreed with them. There were reports, frequent reports, of these Muslim fighters stopping in mid-battle, dropping their weapons and walking away. The reason? They saw a vision of Jesus in front of them saying, stop this, follow me. And it was more than one, it was dozens. Uh, it was actually getting to crisis level. There were uh, there were too many ISIS fighters having vis visions of Jesus. Uh, some people uh, raising questions. You can see uh, testimonies online of people who have raised questions about their Muslim faith. They've got themselves locked up in prison and then in prison uh, Jesus comes and stands before them and says, follow me. And so they're, they're willing to face death because they've seen Jesus. Uh, these visions of Jesus in unusual places. You couldn't say a battlefield is a thin place, but God created one. God has broken into our world on frequent occasions. What would you do, now here's a bit of a hypothetical, if there was such a place, if there was a place where somebody had a vision of Jesus or, or somebody had a spiritual or supernatural experience of Jesus uh, locally here in Gatton, who knows, could even happen in Gatton, right at, uh, at say, Lake Apex, near the barbecues, someone saw Jesus, right? And word got out that if you went there, you could see a vision of Jesus. And half a dozen people start talking about it. Oh, we've seen this vision of Jesus and uh, it's down near the barbecue, just to the left. Um, what would you do? Would you want to go there and have a look? I think I'd be wanting to suss it out. Might even plan a barbecue there <laughs> just to you know, see what's going on. Wouldn't it be interesting if there was such a place where you knew you could have a vision of Jesus, you could experience Jesus for yourself and you could go there and you could see him, you could meet him. Wouldn't that be interesting? You know, these, these places that, uh, that see a vision of Mary and that kind of thing, they get busloads going there. Uh, I remember there was a, there was a place uh, where I come from uh, in South Australia, down south of Adelaide. Uh, it was... Um, uh, a place where they made blankets. Onkaparinga, I think, something like that. Anyway, down there, there was this old church and something happened. I think there was a bit of salt damp in the, in the wall or something like that. And then above the altar, so up there somewhere, there was this, uh, like this old stone wall and the, all the plaster sort of um, cracked or something, bubbled out in the shape of a face. You had to squint to see it, but people were saying that this was a, an apparition of Mary. Personally, I couldn't see it. it. looked to me like salt damp, but maybe I'm just, that's just me. But anyway, they had busloads going there. There were, there were people you could pay to go on this tour to see this apparition in this old church. Um, now I don't, I don't know I didn't investigate it I don't know if people got healed there or anything like that but imagine if you could imagine if that was the case where maybe even here that would be the go if we had um, there, was a, there was a movie like that you know it's called uh, uh, um, Leap of Faith really funny movie and I'm not going to tell you about the end because the end is really good but if you see that Steve Martin in Leap of Faith, it's about this uh, preacher who's a real shyster 
and he gets up on this cross and he paints um, tears and, and he paints a bit of blood on the, on the statue of Jesus. Um, but if, imagine if you got a real one like that, you know, where Jesus started to weep or something like that. And all, you'd get people flocking in here like crazy. Wouldn't it be good to have a place like that? If we could have a place where we could go and you knew you were going to connect with Jesus. Now, if you know anything about sermons and, and um, uh, uh, you know, speaking and leading up to a, a topic and something like that, what I'm going to say next is we've got one. There is such a place. And we call it the Bible. Do you realise what that is? Do you realise that this is a thin place? And you can carry it in the hip pocket of your jeans. That's what this is. It's a portable, thin place. See... When you connect with your Bible, it's not just information. It is that. It's historical account, right? It's people throughout the ages over a period of about nearly 2,000 years, right? A collection of works from, from nearly 2,000 years where people have sat around, and that, well, not sat around, but they've responded to these experiences of God, like this one that Jacob had. Oh, I've had this vision of angels going up and down from heaven down to earth. And they've experienced that and so they've written it down to share that with others. This is what I saw. I saw a vision of angelic beings coming and talking to me. And they've written that down, shared that story with others. Other people, you know, Moses comes along and he sees God in a burning bush and God speaks to him and so he writes down what all of the details of the discussion and shares that with others. And uh, people have gathered up these stories of God and put them all together and we call it the Bible. And so you've got these historic accounts of these thin places, of these visions, of these experiences of God, of God entering our world and dealing directly with people. So you've got all these gatherings of the stories. But also what happens is that God says, when you deal with this book, you're going to deal with me. Because as you read this book, I'm going to come to you and gently deal with your spirit. So as you read this book, it's different from any other book that you can read other books and it's information sharing, maybe even a good to-do thing of you know self-help or whatever but as you read the bible god says i'm going to send my holy spirit to assist you in understanding and help you reconfigure your life so there's an extra level with the word of god it's a thin place it's a place where we actually come and experience god face to face i've seen people um, you know, move from uh, from complete atheists to, you know, you can talk with them about the Bible and argue all day. But when they sit down and look at the Bible themselves and they work it through for themselves, they've come away with a completely different attitude and, you know, I've done nothing. But they've encountered the Bible, they've encountered God in his word it's a place, it's a Bethel. It's a place where heaven meets earth. That's what the Bible does. That's why I'm so intent on Bible study. That's why I, I love it when people get around and read the word together in fellowship. That's why I love it when we can sit and discuss the Bible because what we're doing is we're connecting with God himself. We're creating a place where heaven meets earth. I hope you've got a favourite Bible. I hope maybe, even if you haven't, 
that you'll go home to after today and get one. Um, and uh, one that's your favourite. It's good to have a favourite. Maybe there's, uh, maybe there's an old one that hasn't been used for years and years. Maybe you can pull it out, dust it off and put it in a brighter place. You don't have to read it. Some of these old things are just too hard to read. It's good to have one in modern translation. But I think the old ones are still special because someone has got a lot out of it. Someone has, has benefited deeply from that ancient old Bible and it's spoken into somebody's life. Um, I had one from my great-grandfather. It was an old King James Version and, and you could open it up and the pages were, were very fragile and, and you could see everywhere he'd written all in the margins and everything like that. That was a special Bible to me. I never read it. It wasn't a reading Bible for me. But it was, a, it was a special Bible because it spoke of the faith of this old man four generations ago uh, that, you know, down the ages has also affected me. May you have a, a special one. Uh, of course, they're all special. But let's, let's hold the Bible up for what it is and let's use it for what it's to be used for. Meet God every day in your Bible. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and always. Amen.